lot of people, organization, don't know that, as you said, food waste is related to climate change. So almost 9% of CO2 emission is tied to food waste mm -hmm. and food loss, right? And as you said, the process of food waste and loss is a very big journey. So shifting the mindset from just feeding, it's not just about feeding, it's about uh, better access to nutritious food. It's kind of like hitting a bird with two stones, right? Yes, we want to feed and have access, but also we want to uh, support the climate because it's very important. Hello and welcome back to Impact Talk, the podcast where we share stories of inspiring individuals who are shaping the Arab world for a better future. I'm your host, Nadine Zidani, sustainability expert and the founder and CEO of Mina Impact. And today I have an amazing guest for you, Hashem Mahfoud. He is the director of Replate for the MENA region. Hashem has transitioned from the world of architecture and design to lead an initiative that turns surplus food into impactful social opportunities. With an MBA in design strategy from the California College of the Arts and a deep commitment in sustainability, Hashem is here to share how he's challenging norms and fighting food waste. Hashem, welcome on Impact Talk. Thank you. Thank you, Nadine. Thank you for having me. It's, uh, I'm super happy to have you. It's been a long time, you know, we know each other. So I'm, uh, I'm really happy to learn more about Replate and, uh, and your story. And, and I really want to start uh, the conversation about that because I just said, you know, in my introduction that your background is in architecture and design, which is kind of completely different right. from what you're doing right now. Correct. So can you tell us more about your story and how, you know, it led you to, uh, to become the director of Replate? Here? Sure. Um, so I think... Uh, the short answer would be, I think, uh, being in the right place in the right time. It's a, I think it's a good coincidence. So uh, I did architecture and community design um, in California. And then after living in the States for a while with my brother, he decided to stay. And I came back to the Gulf, to Kuwait specifically, and worked there for six years on a project. And by the time the project were about to end, I was planning to move back to California. And then my, my brother was like, well, wait a minute, we have this uh, interesting project at Expo, Expo 2020. Uh, would you be interested to try it out? And I was like, uh, you know, I mean, working in construction, project management is pretty stressful, corporate life, right? Yeah. So I'm like, well, you know, work from home, make the work better, you know, connect with my brother, why not? And I think that's how it started. Moved here around a few months before Expo, prepared for the six-month project. It was just a contract for six months. But then it kind of grew up on me and I decided to stay and push forward uh, with Replate and see how we can uh, tell people more about uh, the story of uh, Replate, I guess. Amazing. So if we can go back, because you're uh, born and raised in the US. Yeah, so born in Syria, okay. raised okay. in Kuwait. Uh, when we were around 17, uh, we got our green cards. Okay. And then uh, we moved, me and my brother, to, uh, to California. San Francisco and then we start our education journey um, and then when we finished he stayed and I decided to come back to work you know my parents called and it's like uh, there's a cool obviously the, the Gulf is all about architecture and and development and he's like this is cool project come here I, th I think they just miss us so they, they were just trying to get one of us back <laughs> so I'm like yeah worst case I mean I'll try it for a year come back so, you know suddenly I've been there for six years uh, it was a great journey obviously I learned so much uh, we worked on a mixed development project similar to Dubai Mall with hotels and uh, food courts, et cetera, et cetera. So, and then by the time it was ending, that's when I wanted to move back to California. Mm -hmm. And then that's how the alignment happened and uh, gave uh, Replate a shot here in the Middle East. Yeah. So can you tell the story of, of Replate? Because it didn't start actually here in, no. uh, in, in the UAE. It started in the US with your brother. Correct, yes. So can you tell us yeah, more yeah, about sure, Replate? Sure. So, I mean, I think uh, I'll try my best to explain it. Obviously, <laughs> Man, Man will say it much better. But uh, so Man background is he was studying medicine. I was studying architecture, typical, obviously, uh, in the Middle East. And then uh, what happened is he, I mean, the amount of, uh, kind of homelessness that we've seen in San Francisco, how much food is being wasted was something very, uh, I think, present around uh, our colleges, right? And uh, 
man was always was interested in system thinking uh, rather than working individually with people, more about system change. And I think being in San Francisco where uh, a lot of these multidisciplinary, uh, I think, energies happening around the city, being, you know, Silicon Valley, etc. He dabbled a little bit with multiple projects and then slowly, after doing, I think, uh, his Master's in Public Health in London, more about system thinking and change. And I feel with the right people around him, he, you know, decided to uh, tackle that problem and then he got into it. Uh, and then, yeah, it became his passion since 2016 when he started Replay. Oh, look at him go. Yeah, yeah. And so how is Replay in, uh, in, in the US? Sure, so I mean, Replate obviously is a so social enterprise uh -huh. that helps businesses donate uh, their surplus food safely to communities, recipients in need. And we use technology to track uh, the environmental and social impact of these donations. So in the States, which started in San Francisco, we're almost in every city and every state. And in states oh. that we don't have our own uh, fleet or drivers or food rescuer, we usually uh, work close with third party uh, delivery companies such as DoorDash or uh, Deliveroo Talabat, similar to these, and then they help us to make sure that uh, we do our operation properly. So uh, yeah, we've been there for for almost well, almost eight years. Yeah. And so in the U.S., you said a social enterprise. Is is it a social enterprise or an NGO? Well, I mean, it's an NGO, yeah. right? Obviously, I think here we're we're talking more about yeah. social enterprise because I think here in in this region still there is uh, we need. I mean, there's a little more work around how to define companies and define activities, etc. I think more, I think in the UAE is more on a, on a social enterprise, yeah. What has been the impact in, uh, in, in the US? I mean, uh, humongous, I would say. Uh, I think the overall, so far, we've rescued over uh, 3.5 3 million meals across states. Um, a huge impact in terms of building relationship with recipient organizations, with clients, uh, a lot of educational programs, uh, a lot of new kind of uh, partnerships with, uh, for example, self-driving cars with crews, uh, where in LA already they're uh, recovering surplus food from restaurant with mm -hmm. uh, electric self-driving cars in collaboration with crews. So I think Replate is at the forefront of uh, what's happening and what's the future in terms of policy, technology, legislation. Uh, California just passed a law recently uh, where businesses that don't take care of their food waste basically properly, they get penalized. And now instead of replay reaching out to business to explain what we do, they, they have to, to come back yeah. and say, well, we don't want to do this. Come here, figure that, us, figure that out for mm -hmm. us and make sure that our books are ready so we can submit. Mm -hmm. And the ecosystem, I mean, in America is very different than, than I think, the Middle East in terms of, um, so there is a lot of incentives for businesses to engage with companies like Replay because they get tax cuts mm -hmm. at the end of the year. So there is, here you go, right? A big reason for companies to engage. And then there's a lot of laws to protect nonprofits in terms of how they uh, deal with, with their operations, especially around food, right? Mm -hmm. It's a very, very interesting model. And to who do you um, give the surplus of food? Because you're the connectors between the people in need, basically, and, you know, the restaurants or, you know, industries. Right. So in America, I mean, food. we'll talk now more about in America, which is interesting, a lot of the surplus come from offices oh. because the office culture has, you know, uh, like, let's say, uh, Netflix uh, headquarters or Facebook yes. headquarters, these companies, they have canteens and they have, uh, you know, uh, almost restaurant on because people spend, it's mm -hmm. a different uh, work culture. Yeah. So a lot of that surplus come from lunch events, from uh, the restaurant within this uh, office building, which is very different than here, mm -hmm. right? Um, but usually the technology allows any company or organization just, you would go to replay.org, create an account with your credit card and then request pickup as if you're requesting or scheduling a Google uh, Hangout meeting or calendar, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you can request it uh, on a specific days. Uh, you can sp uh, request it uh, kind of daily. And then somebody will show up, pick up the food, and anytime you can access the, your platform, your dashboard, and see the impact uh, and, and get all the details about uh, the process, yeah. Um, I really like, you know, what you do uh, at Replate because you, you spot on, you know, a, a big issue with food waste 
and you come up with a solution that is, you know, innovative, uh, digital, um, and very forward-looking. So uh, it's it's very interesting. I'd love to learn how the model in the U.S. You know, you brought it to the Middle East, and uh, how it's working here because I guess it's a yes, different it's, context it's as you different. said. So it's quite different. What yeah. does it? What what is replayed here in sure. the, the Middle East? Uh, and when we say Middle East, is it only the UAE for now? Or? For now, I mean obviously a lot of operation is uh, is in UAE. Mm -hmm. We've had a very close talks with uh, businesses in Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. Um, obviously, a lot of the surplus that we recover comes from hotels and. Uh, uh, FMB groups, mm -hmm. so and most of them, like Al Shaya Group or Majl Fatim or Amar or right Azadia, they operate in the GCC. So the fact that we were able to work with them on multiple projects here kind of sparked that interest. How can we scale operation? How can we scale impact with these brands, with these organizations? So that's why these talks are always ongoing. So we expect, I think, early next year to do a few projects in Saudi and Kuwait. Yeah. So it's more project based here. It's, yes. It's so it's kind of a different model. Yeah. So our model here. So uh, what happens in Replate Middle East when we came in at Expo? We did the six months. First, uh, we have to work with, in terms of handling and delivery of surplus food, it has to go through the UAE Food Bank, okay. which is an entity under the municipality, and they are dedicated and the only entity that are allowed to move surplus food. Okay. So that's one of the main major differences. In America, we operate our own fleet. So mm -hmm. we have our own drivers uh, who uh, pick up and mm -hmm. deliver surplus food. Uh, second thing, the second difference is uh, in terms of policy is there's no incentives for businesses, as I said earlier. To So how would you incentivize businesses here to join in a conversation that's very new to them, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and third is uh, safety laws. In UAE, obviously, food safety is is very, very, very critical and important. I mean, if you go to a hotel today, in anywhere in most of uh, hotels in UAE, request your food to go. Some of them will ask you to sign a disclaimer form saying, "Well, you take care of that sushi that you took with you, and we're not responsible." Right? So mm -hmm. it's it's very strict, right? So as you can see, these are a lot of the differences, and I would say a little bit challenges that we're facing here. What we, we, after we did the six month here, we noticed that uh, while the technology is very exciting, uh, there is a huge education and awareness gap that need to be filled first. And when we start to talk into businesses that, well, we did here at Expo, we can do this. And then mm -hmm. everybody was hesitant because obviously they know it's a challenging process. And it's very hard to convince businesses to donate surplus food when sometimes they're not composting or not recycling, right? So we come in to the most vulnerable layer of uh, rescue, let's say, right? Which is the last, uh, it's, it's the edible food, right? Mm -hmm. Before it gets to the landfills. Um, so obviously, a lot of challenges. So we felt that we need to do more consulting at the beginning, right? To provide more mm -hmm. education, more uh, uh, awareness, right? Uh, to speak the language of these clients slowly, so they would give us a chat, uh, trying to, sh to prove to them that, yes, food can be rescued, and yes, people here need access uh, to the surplus food. And I think you touched upon um, like um, a critical issue, which is awareness. Um, and that's, you know, something that all purpose-driven entrepreneurs, um, social enterprises, you know, have to face, uh, especially in the region. So how, because I want as well our listeners actually to kind of understand the, the issue with food waste, because the food waste, it's linked to climate change. Uh, as you said, you know, it goes most of the time to landfills, which creates, you know, more emissions. Yeah and you know um, uh, more issues you know related to climate change so can you kind of elaborate a little bit into the food waste issue and the food system actually because the whole when we step back the whole food system and you you know as you said at the end of the of the the cycle yes um, the whole food system is actually uh, um, um, broken in yes. a way so yes. can you elaborate a little sure, bit sure. on that um, so i mean back to the awareness i think one of the first facts that i mean a lot of people organization don't know that as you said food waste is related to climate change so almost nine percent of co2 emission is tied to 
food waste mm -hmm. and food loss, right? And as I said, the process of food waste and loss is a very big journey. It starts from uh, planting the, 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 the food to processing it, to shipping it, to, uh, you know, like the whole process until mm -hmm. it gets to homes, yes. gets to restaurant, gets cooked, gets delivered. So all this is, is a very huge process and food gets kind of uh, lost in, in this journey. Um, so we, we, in the awareness part, we're trying to shift that, yes, there is the social aspect, which everybody understands that this is food and this is a blessing. This is a nama, as we say in, in Arabic, and we need to protect it. So I think that's a good news that we can start somewhere, the conversation. Now, shifting it also to the point that even if you have access to food, you still need access to nutritious, uh, diverse, well-balanced food. Mm -hmm. Right. Because we don't see obviously there's not a lot of hunger uh, that's, uh, I mean, uh, visible around us. But there's a lot of people that need access to proper food. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they would save the money and send it back home to support their families. Right. So shifting the mindset from just feeding. It's not just about feeding. It's about uh, better access to nutritious food and to address a lot of this climate issues where, as we know, all that sur that that surplus food when it reached the landfill it emits it emits a very bad uh, methane right which is a it's much way more toxic than co2 um, and today we see a lot of climate change related incidents i mean uh, you know i mean we can talk from here to any place around the world so this helps because now people understand that mm -hmm. wait a minute it's kind of like hitting a bird with two stones, right? Yes, we want to feed and have access, but also we want to uh, support the climate because it's mm -hmm. very important uh, for everybody. So, um, yeah, we've been, and that's the part where we're trying to always shift the mindset. Uh, and businesses now understand that they have to report back uh, about their CSR, how they're addressing SDGs, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and replate address a lot of these 17 uh, many of them. So it helps. Slowly they are understanding that they have to internally submit what they're doing about that and plus obviously all the um, CSR and PR around uh, helping and giving back to the community. Yeah. And, and in your awareness activities, um, do you tackle the root cause of food waste? Because at the end of the day, we don't want... Um, we don't want any food waste, so you have we have to be more mindful, right. you know, in the way we produce the food and the consumption around that. So, how do you, you know, have the conversation with those businesses, restaurants, um, and and diverse you know, stakeholders on, you know, how can we reduce at the end of the day, you know, the the food waste we generate? Sure, I think the first step always is to understand why food waste is happening, right? Mm -hmm. So to be informed. And I think when I mentioned earlier that we started with doing a little bit more consulting, mm -hmm. we even built a framework on how we approach businesses. Mm -hmm. So we kind of have this five steps, uh, which first is we do this operational uh, survey where we come in, talk to the client, to their teams, understand their operation, mm -hmm. and try to uh, kind of highlight their waste patterns, habits, right? In multiple kind of uh, front, mm -hmm. uh, fronts of their business. Second, we decide which kind of food rescue program they would need because there's many different ones. Uh, one is what we call external, which we connect businesses to a charity or a food bank to come and pick up the food. And the new thing that we start doing here to, we felt there is another need for it here, is an internal system of fridges in uh, malls, airport, where you have multiple vendors donating to people working at the mall. So we decide on which food recovery they need. Uh, then we use technology, which is a big part of what we offer, uh, to track uh, the uh, donation process and understand the data. And then we support in operation and in branding and creating this food rescue program, right? Um, so back to your question, the technology for a tree plate, the dashboard is very insightful and helpful for clients because it, there's two parts to it. One part is the food recovery, which is the short uh, term impact, meaning we make sure that food surplus food reach to people mm -hmm. uh, and they get access to it. But also we have the uh, source reduction, which is understanding your insight and data, meaning let's say, for example, you would go on your dashboard and you will see that last month the most donated item was uh, brown bread and it happened mostly on weekends. So this 
insight, and it's like an insight tab on your dashboard, it gives you more data from a preventive preventative mindset, meaning if I'm wasting so much price bread, let's talk to procurement, What, how much we're ordering, right? Uh, maybe we need to change something. So there's these two, kind of the, the impact, which is the short term, making sure the food goes somewhere that for people who need it, and then the insight to understand these patterns, these habits, and dig deeper into data to create more ways to prevent mm -hmm. uh, waste from happening. Because the best way to reduce waste is uh, to to waste, I mean, right? To understand the, the kind of grassroots for the problem. And this is the strength, actually, of, of Replay. It's because, I mean, when you have the data, I mean, having the discussions with uh, businesses, it, it's much more easier when you show them the data and say, hey, this is actually, you know, where you, you're wasted, you know, you're wasting uh, more food. So how do, they, how do they react when you show them the dashboard and, you know, come with the data? Yeah. And, I mean, they're. I mean, obviously, they're uh, surprised because I mean, they. They. I mean, honestly, it's, it's always like a mission impossible to tell them that we can rescue food, uh, and we can make sure it goes to the right place. Like mm -hmm. as I said, because it's a very challenging process. Uh, but that's why back again to the awareness. The tech is amazing, but how do you convince businesses to try? Mm -hmm. So that's why we sh we started doing the consulting and focus on piloting. One of the approaches that we found success in is. Uh, doing pilots with clients. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I mean by that is instead of saying, hey, we need to work with you for a year and we need to do this and right, like it kind of break it down for them and saying, we'll start with a pilot, we'll understand your operation, your waste habits, and we will build a system and a plan right from the pilot for you, customized for you. And we noticed that that helped us a lot to break the barrier for them to take, let's say, a leap of faith and try Uh, a food re rescue program, right, uh, with us. And once that uh, they see the data, they see that in the last three months, for example, we were able to rescue, a th let's say, 500 kilos of food, which is equivalent to this amount number of meals. And by doing so, this translates into a number of water saved, right, like liters of water saved and uh, CO2, kilos of CO2 emission that was diverted from the environment. So seeing all this and showing them how they can use the data, mm -hmm. how to read it, how to kind of uh, repackage it for different, let's say for social, for PR, for their sustainability department. Uh, so the awareness, the consultancy part becomes very important to excite them to take a step and try it. Yeah. And do you tackle the... Um, um Uh, economic aspect as well in the discussion because I yes. like the example of bread that you gave you know like this is the you know the 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 total you know um, uh, consumption of bread that you could have you know right. uh, avoid um, yes. do you is it something yes, that is part of the discussion yes and I think we do even one layer before that is a lot of times obviously when uh, let me tell you how like usually it works so we will go to a client and the first thing is Uh, if there is a sustainability department, that's great. If not, we go and start with the marketing department. Mm -hmm. Once they get like, this could be a great campaign, uh, then they throw us at, uh, let's say, the C <laughs> a CFO or some C level. Well, they start kind of uh, negotiating the price. Because uh -huh. I think one of the main issues is giving, the like, rescuing food or doing good work is seen as a charity work. And that's a fundamental problem in sustainability mm -hmm. projects is how can we make sustainability sustainable? I mean, at the end of the day, there's so much to be done. It's actually harder to rescue food than doing to actually sell food, right? Mm -hmm. and, and we really need to, 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 to shift minds around this, this mm -hmm. process. Every time it's like they are fighting with us instead of supporting us, right? And uh, allowing us to create the project properly, allow us to show them the potential, right? It becomes a fight on Uh, right, working almost for free, mm -hmm. which are always challenging. And then let's say we approve the, a budget, then they're like, go talk to the chef or the operation. And imagine that I need to talk to a chef and tell him, you will pay me money to take your surplus edible five-star food, right? And your job usually is not to have food waste. So you're going to pay me to show everybody that you have food extra food, you're going to give it to me, and you're going to pay me to take it, right? So obviously, it's a very tough conversation. 
But again, uh, back to the economical a- aspect, I think uh, based on the UAE Food Bank, every meal is about 10 dirhams, 10 to 15 dirhams. So every meal obviously has a value that we can account for. But even before rescuing the food, right, is uh, it costs a lot to uh, haul away to dispose your organic waste. So we always come in from a perspective, how much are you wasting? Uh, like your organic waste in the operation, right? In terms of yeah. landscape, in terms of restaurants, let's say in a mall or in a, in a building. So by rescuing, let's say 10 to 15% of your food, we're reducing your bill, right? Which is, uh, it can get pretty high. I mean, the government have increased it few folds just to push companies to reduce uh, uh, kind of their organic waste, right? So there is a layer there. So let's say, we'll, we'll tell them, if we save a little bit from here and we get a little bit from your marketing campaign, right? Because we want to do something uh, a little bit more purposeful. And as you said, there is value of the food and finally supporting governmental uh, initiatives and uh, kind of uh, missions. So it, you know, it kind of adds up to the point to do a pilot and then the pilot hopefully becomes a permanent uh, solution. Quite a challenging yes. journey, <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. And you're not the first one, um, honestly, telling me that. Um, all you know, um, social enterprises, purpose-driven entrepreneurs are exactly facing the same uh, issues and challenges. I'd like what you said about I end up fighting uh, with you know different departments. Uh, one of the things is that for me, you shouldn't be talking to marketing, which is the first, you know, one of the first um, problem, I would say. And the other thing is indeed the, um, the financial aspect of, of the work you do. So how do you, um, how do you overcome this, you know, um, a challenge? And how do you, yeah, in the conversation with your stakeholders, how do you overcome this challenge? Um, I think... Uh... You just have to get creative, and to, uh, I think the the faster you speak the right language, mm-hmm. the the brand language, I think the 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 easier for you to convince them to try or to mm-hmm. do a pilot. And what we've noticed, uh, one of the insights is that finding the right, I would call him, let's say, uh, or her sustainability hero within the organization, mm-hmm. that really understands uh, the value that we can bring in. Uh, and, and, and empower them mm-hmm. to champion this conversation internally mm-hmm. to get it signed or to get it pushed or to get it extended is very, very important. A lot of time, a lot of the work is around building a relationship with the right people in the organization mm-hmm. after you find them. And it's very hard to, as I said, like sometimes, I mean, if there's no sustainability, then there is marketing. If it's marketing, how we can, how can we create it as a, instead of a pilot, it's an initiative. Mm-hmm. At with Majid Futaim, we did Feed the Future. We started as a pilot in one of the Emirates, and then uh, we they pushed it as a, a, a kind of more permanent program, and we we expanded to City Center Deira, Merdif, and Zahia, right? With Feed the Future, and now Carrefour is interested to push it as a permanent solution, all across UAE. It all started as a pilot and a marketing campaign mm-hmm. at one of the Emirates, right? by f- finding the right person, by keep pushing, by introducing fridges to allow surplus uh, to, uh, to circulate uh, within the same site. So even in sustainability, we need to get more sustainable, right? Mm-hmm. To reduce waste, we want to, we don't, we, we don't want to waste at all, right? From the first place. So but we don't need every time somebody who wants to donate food to have somebody go pick up the food. There is a lot of people and a lot of recipients that could make access to this food within the same location, right? Enhancing the welfare of the business is as important as taking the food to another recipient because, you know, the closer, the faster you redistribute, the better in general as uh, the operation of food recovery. But yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's an instance. You're giving us good insights, uh, Hashem. Yeah, yeah, sure. about yeah, yeah, the finding the good, the, the right people, you yes. know, within the organization and uh, the sponsors that's gonna really support the initiative, and 
talking their language. I think it's so, so, so important because we tend to be a bit in our bubble sometimes, you know, um, um, with the work we do and, you know, all sustainability related, you know, work that we can be doing and not, you know, and being a bit disconnected from um, the, the, the strategic goals and the brand, the culture, you know, of those organizations. So uh, it's a lot of adaptation and it's exactly what you did. I mean, compared to the, the model of replating the US to what you do here, like it, it's just completely different. Yeah, 100%. I think like uh, adaptation, getting insights, yeah. uh, innovation, changing your business model, mm -hmm. right? Uh, collaboration. Like mm -hmm. I feel a lot of times we recently uh, signed an MOU with uh, the Waste Lab and uh, we're really excited about that because one of early on in the conversation, whenever we talk to clients, we're like, okay, you will help us recover edible surplus. What about the one that you cannot recover? We're like, well, you can compost it. So speaking uh, client's language is very important. Uh, I think uh, there is a general mindset that sustainability uh, is, uh, a lot of people see it as greenwashing or they see it as very expensive. Mm -hmm. And I think there is a place in the middle. I think sustainability can be uh, sustainable, it can be uh, fun, it can be um, exciting. And I think by understanding the client uh, or the brand language and speed and kind of slowly integrating and understanding how they operate and introducing it uh, in, in small portions, you really, it, it, will, it would work, it would work. And that's what we've been trying to do. In addition, a lot of clients want more value for their buck, let's say, or for their money. And I think that's where bring back the collaboration is very important. Recently, we signed an MOU with the, with the Waste Lab, and we're very excited about this collaboration because not only it brings more value for us as, as, as startups and companies, but also to clients. Because mm -hmm. every time we, we, we approach a new client, they're like, well, great, yes, you can recover and help us uh, repurpose that surplus food. What about the food that we cannot sell? We're like, well, now, instead of just saying, like, there's other companies, like, we're our partners, and, you know, they, they're able to, to, to compost, and now we can offer this full circle, uh, right, to, of zero waste in terms of food, right? Um, so we really encourage more of that uh, uh, kind of uh, collaborations, yeah. Yeah, this is amazing. I mean, I know the West Lab, yeah. and we are doing as well an amazing work, and it's it's really great to see you both guys, you know, collaborating and partnering together. This is this is how it should happen. Thank you. Amazing. Um, so, do you have any success story that you want to share um, from a um, plate? Success stories for for me personally is whenever we start with a pilot and it yeah. turns into uh, a permanent solution. I think uh, one of the biggest mission uh, I am, let's say I'm on, is to change the idea of food recovery happens in Ramadan or a specific event. Mm -hmm. No, this should become a vertical, like recycling, like composting, mm -hmm. something that we just do and it happens every day, right? Um, but one of the stories that I'd like to share is, uh, and it, it comes from how much we uh, kind of uh, innovate and change uh, uh, from learning from the project is uh, Feed It Forward at Yasmol, where we're doing a food rescue program using these smart fridges uh, and all the surplus food, although we were able to... Can you explain the smart fridges? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, okay, <laughs> sure, okay. So one of the success stories, I would say, obviously success is tied to, uh, I would say, the, the impact uh, and, and the number of meals and the environmental impact of that. But beyond that, I think... Uh, 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 what do you call it, the uh, changing, changing some people's life, making someone's day. A lot of that surplus food could, could go to uh, people working uh, uh, at, the, uh, at the mall. Mm -hmm. So uh, leaving after a long shift and having a donut or having a nice meal uh, on the way back, uh, you made someone's day. And that's amazing. Again, it's not only about feeding and not, not only about uh, saving the environment. And why the, our project at... Uh, Yes, yeah, small uh, is special because the client realized how important to increase the welfare of people working in the mall, of the security, the cleaners, the people, the, 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 the heroes behind mm -hmm. running that organization, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think that's special because, yes, there is recipients and people who need food everywhere, right? But 
by adapting a more circular approach where we don't want the food to, we don't want somebody to come take the food and uh, take it away and the safety that goes around it. Now we're trying to do more of that circular approach through these smart fridges, which is like a community fridge that allows a different restaurant to donate food, but it's always locked. It has technologies that whenever you want to donate, you will scan. Mm -hmm. It opens the fridge. You Let's say, I'll give you an example. For example, um, cheesecake, end of the day, they have surplus food. We provide packaging. Mm -hmm. They It's a three compartment package. They put uh, the surplus as close as possible to a meal. They label it as if you're asking food to go. And then uh, at their own time, they'll walk to the fridge, which is a very close by, uh, usually in the welfare area of the, of the mall. Place the, they scan the fridge. There's a QR code, scan to donate. They open, put the food. Mm -hmm. There's shel the shelves have sensors. So whenever they drop the food, I get notified that cheesecake at 10 p.m. dropped three kilos of food and closed within a few seconds the door. And then later, anybody can scan, put few information, take the surplus food, mm -hmm. right, and uh, make use of it, right? Mm -hmm. So the technology bringing security, bringing more data. Now, instead of clients and in inputting uh, what they donated, now automatically I can get the first layer from the weight of the food and number of meals, right? So technology is allowing us to understand more and, and, and uh, streamline more the process mm -hmm. and make it more safe and uh, easy for businesses to donate at different timing mm -hmm. in, in, in big operations that run 24 seven, like a mall, airport, or mixed development. This is amazing. Thank you. Um, so um, I like the fact that, as you said, you know, you are adopting a circular approach and instead of thinking directly like, yeah, the food has to go somewhere, like thinking about the local community, I mean, the, the stakeholders, basically, of, uh, of the mall, as the example that you, you took. I think it's, uh, it makes so much sense. And, and do you see a consumption of this food? Like, or do you have as well to explain, you know, to um, people that, yeah, we have the fridges, you can go anytime and pick up the food, or is it yeah, happening so, very Yeah, naturally? so what happens is, uh, obviously, the mall will uh, kind of, uh, through their channels, will make sure that everybody have an idea about the project. Mm -hmm. And we create a whole, when we talk about food rescue program, we talk, it's a program. So we build, we brand it. We, we explain it, we build this presentation, these processes, this project plan of how to run it, right, over mm -hmm. time, uh, how to reach out to clients, to recipients, who should we target first. And we work closely with uh, the client. We bring in uh, government and semi-government entities to, uh, so everybody feels it's credible, mm -hmm. to feel comfortable to engage. Uh, again, and, and we become this uh, kind of catalyst, right, Again, before even using the technology, mm -hmm. yes. And of course, technology is very important to scale. And this is at the heart of Replate. But what I'm saying, I think for the next year or two, the focus is in to bring people together, bring these different organization, and make sure uh, everybody understand why this is important and why this is relevant, right? Mm -hmm. And by bringing more, I think, uh, government and municipality municipalities into this conversation, we will see more adaptation. Mm -hmm. Because credibility is very important around food recovery. Mm -hmm. You know, listening to you, uh, there is one word that come to, uh, comes to my mind is patience. Because th that's a lot of work. That's massive work, what you're doing. Because, again, it's very different from a traditional business where you have a product or a service, you go, you market it. Basically, I mean, oversimplifying it. And then you find, you know, your customers and that's it. Like here you have to convince so many different people, so many different, you know, organizations from private, public sector, uh, go through, you know, the regulations. Um, it, it's quite a lot. So I really want to ask you, Ashim, what keeps you going? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, um, so, I mean, with, uh, I think, architecture and creative background, I think I find a lot of uh, excitement, I would say, and... Uh, it's very rewarding for me to use my creativity to solve problems. Mm -hmm. And I think the more somebody tells me it's impossible, the more <laughs> I want to make it possible. Uh, I think that's one layer from it. But back to when I mentioned uh, making someone's day, mm -hmm. I think knowing that you know, somebody had a great day, 
because they just grab the donut end of the day after a busy day, right? Like that's that's very special. I mean, in, in a cliche way, like leaving it a little bit better than finding it. So every day I feel uh, it, it's good mm-hmm. to give back to people. Mm-hmm. I mean, we grew up around this concept at home uh, since young, uh, since we were young. It's always, I mean, we used to wear each other clothes, which would to make sure all that sur- extra food goes to to our neighbors. So I think that mindset is, is very, uh, uh, very dear to me and then now the fact that I can do it as a business while still using creativity to figure it out mm-hmm. I think touch on two, pay, two, two pieces for me and I think that's what keeps me going yeah. mm-hmm. so compared to the work you've been doing before uh, because you had a different as we said at the beginning career path you know at uh, when you started to now would you say that um, you're more purpose driven or having a more purposeful life yeah, I mean, I think, uh, yeah, purpose, mission, uh, driven, I think definitely. Uh, obviously, the work we do touches people, touches environment, touches uh, emotions, if you want to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my background in architecture and community design uh, came suddenly very handy when I come to an organization like a mall or airport because I right away can understand how things work, how the waste management work. Right. And then yeah. again, back to bringing creativity into, I think once you put your mind to it, there is always ways to, uh, uh, to, to make the best out of what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, but definitely more purpose driven. Uh, it feels good every time I talk to people about what I do. Uh, it's exciting. Right. Uh, yes. I mean, we rescue a few meals or it's, it's a very little uh, impact, but I think mm-hmm. uh, uh, if, I mean, one hand can't clap, right. We need, more people to join this uh, movement, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, talking about that, I'm sure that our listeners, you know, are very inspired by your story and the, the great work you're doing at Replate. What would be your advice to them? You know, if you're interested into food waste or any, you know, um, global issue uh, that, you know, we have for which we have to find, you know, solutions um, like you're doing, what would be your advice to them? Ooh. Um, I think to, 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 to connect to something or like something, you need to understand it. And I think there is, that's why back to awareness, I think from a personal level, people need to understand more why this is important, why this is relevant, whether uh, following the right accounts or uh, talking to it or teaching it or at work, right? Uh, I think just understanding the implication and the consequences of this is very important. Also, um, uh, I think baby steps, like businesses, like, you know, like start small, uh, whether at home, if you, I don't know how you organize your food in your fridge or uh, by, uh, you know, in in business, by allowing companies like us to to try and do pilots with you if you work for businesses, right? Um, I think baby steps and understanding the problem is, Mm -hmm. is key to get engaged and for this to become something that you can support or be part of. Mm-hmm. Volunteering, supporting, there's many ways, right? Uh, and I, we see a lot of this, uh, the movement is growing here. Um, yeah, so I would say. So, and and now what's next for uh, for Replace? Ooh, uh, so uh, I think, um, so we're working now on a new project, which is kind of, I would say, the evolution of food recovery. Okay. So as you know, like Replate in the U.S. Uh, help businesses donate their surplus food uh, and uh, to recipients through delivery. Mm-hmm. When we came here, we did it with the UAE Food Bank. Then we came up with the fridges. Then we went to smart fridges, right? And now we think that the solution for all this is just to have some kind of a... Uh, a, a, a food rescue unit, more like a kiosk that is ready to take all that surplus food, reassemble it, uh-huh. and provide it to people to solve a lot of this problem. So imagine if you're a, in a mall, there is an actual food rescue unit that its job is to be part of the organization, work with all the FMBs, and make sure all the surplus come. So if I get bread from this, and I get some 
a near expiry item from here or I mm -hmm. get some salad from here, how can I reassemble this and make sure that there is no waste to at all, right? So we're like we're just looking into um, how can we uh, create more permanent solution within entities that uh, so no 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 meat is, is is wasted. Yeah. yeah, this is interesting. I love how innovative you are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're trying, really? right? Really? No, no. <laughs> it's like trends. You, you really, you, businesses always want like this new idea, right? And, and Dubai is famous for like the first of everything. Mm -hmm. And I think that mindset is really exciting because it, it gives us a lot of push into saying, well, no, I don't have to wait a year. I will pilot and I will try and I will pitch it. Mm -hmm. And if there is a right client, right, to bite on it, then it could become something. And yeah. I think that mindset is very important uh, to push ideas forward. Yeah, it's, it's very, um, very um a special to the to the UAE and the, yes. and the region, yeah, which is absolutely. exciting. It yes. is. It's yeah, very, yeah, exciting. It's very exciting. Okay, um, so um, if people want to reach out to you, learn more about Replay, to get involved, how can they contact you? Uh, sure. I mean, uh, uh, so they can follow us on Instagram at replay.me. Uh, we have a website, LinkedIn, all the socials. Uh, also, you can reach out on to me on LinkedIn uh, anytime, Hasha Mahfoud, and uh, we're happy to answer any questions. Super. Thank you so much, uh, you Hashem. Uh, and honestly, it was a very, uh, I knew a little bit about Replate because we know each other, uh, but not all the, the story. And uh, it's very, very impressive what you're doing. Very needed. So uh, really like congratulations and, uh, and please keep going. On, thank you. Uh, thank you for having us and highlighting, highlighting what we do. Really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. And that, what I really liked as well about your story is the, um, how you're using actually your skills uh, you know, from architecture and design and problem solving to what you're doing right now. Because we are a lot of people who are either, you know, interested into sustainability or, you know, transitioned in a way or another. And most of the time, people when come to me and ask questions, they're like, yeah, but I was doing something completely different. I don't feel that I'm credible or, you know, I can, you know, uh, jump into, you know, this new uh, path. And I think you're a great example. Thank you. Know. you. And, and just to speak to that, yeah. I think anybody who considers to in sustainability coming from a different background, it, is, it brings a very fresh uh, kind of mindset and that we need this. We need, I, I think, multidisciplinary approaches is very important uh, to, to build awareness around sustainability. So for whoever wants to do that, I think just... Just do it. I mean, I think you're going to bring so much value to the conversation. 100%. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and search for Impact Talk with Nadine Zidani on your favorite podcast platform. You can follow us on Instagram and LinkedIn and stay tuned for more impactful stories.